Time slips away when I'm listening to that song. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I was having a little dance party and I invited you to come to the dance party. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. What are we going to be doing today, you guys? We are going to be watching hey, videos. Hey, fashionistas, I just wanted to come on. This is Andrea Hutchinson. She's an elite with paparazzi. And we are going to bike model this convention chit chat that she had in July at convention that one of my amazing viewers downloaded and sent my way. So, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I want to tell you how much I appreciate it. So let's get our little red flag up. Or should we do the devil? I don't know. What sounds good, you guys? Should we do the red flag or should we do the devil? I'm, I'm now lost. I think we'll do the devil. Because that's how I feel about elites. <clears throat> so, let's get started on what is being said. I have not watched this. I am live reacting to it. We're going to focus on the bite model and here we go. Oh my gosh. How we wish that you were here. Um, some of you are here at convention. and. Oh my gosh, how I wish everybody had spent money that they probably didn't have to come to convention. Oh, there's so much going on. Um, communicable diseases happened again this year. Janet Jackson happened this year. If you, if you think you missed out on convention, don't worry. The event picks just dropped uh, when I started recording this. So, the event picks are now on the paparazzi website. Yay! Paparazzieventpicks.com. Here we go. Some of you couldn't make it this year. Maybe financial issues, time, work, family. Yes, those things happen. Financial issues. Everything's more expensive. Work. Yes, 99.56 of the consultants within paparazzi actually have jobs outside of the home because they're one, not business owners, and two, they have to pay for all the jewelry they keep buying Monday through Friday. Um, but um, I wish you were here. So some of I'm you sure are you do. watching the replay. I usually don't come on live all at a convention because I really don't have time. <laughs> But um, I'm supposed to be getting ready for the Live of the Party event right now. She's supposed um, to be, but she's not. Minutes, and I just want to share something with you because today's general session was amazing. And when I tell you... Okay, so I don't know which what which thing she heard in general section, but I ugh, can't even talk session. But I'm pretty sure... We are going to see, and this is just me speculating again, I have not watched this yet. She is going to talk about the religious manipulation. So, bite model. Those of you who are not familiar with Steve Hassan's bite model, there's varying levels of degrees of this bite model. The description to the bite model is in the description box below this video. By all means, please go look it up and read about it, okay? Um, it's very enlightening. But what religious manipulation mind screwery was going on with this thing today? It was amazing. Uh, I don't think I emphasize enough how amazing it was because it was amazing. And those of you who are here, you would agree with me that, I mean, we say it all every year. This is the best convention. This is the best convention. Yeah, it's just but in so all good. reality, it has been and it's just day one. We still have two more days. It is just day one. Hey, Valerie. Hey, Patty. Natty, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You guys, it was amazing. If you're not following me on Marco Polo, you're really missing all of this, the behind the scenes that I'm taking pictures of uh, and videos of, the Z collections and all of that stuff. And then tomorrow I'll be able to post more. But I'm taking you literally with me to convention to every little thing that we are doing. Um, hmm. So if you're not here, I highly encourage you to join us on Marco Polo. But uh, today's session, uh, just starting with Misty, Misty Kirby and her story that I don't think she has ever shared uh, was amazing. And then having Ryan talk about all the improvements that they're making uh, for, that they are making for our, what's it called? for uh, the premiere app. I'm trying to help Tina because she's like, where is a Marco Polo? So if anybody has a Marco Polo thing, that would be awesome if we could share it. I don't know if I have it in here. Um, uh, 
um, but I'm, I'll, I'll try to do it after the live, and that way I can, yeah, I'm gonna have to do it after the live, because I don't have it right here with me, so I'll post it after the live, but I, I have posted it a few days ago on a post, um, so anyway, so I just want to talk. So this is the one where Misty trauma dumped on everyone and shared her story, and that's what I'm gonna call it where she was talking about her really terrible pregnancy. There's a video on it. I did it back in the back when convention was going on. If you did, didn't see my videos during convention, go back to July and rewatch the videos from July. You'll see this speech where she's talking about how she was on a feeding tube and she was really sick during her pregnancy. All of this is awful. But at the same time, it was trauma dumping. And this comes from the Eric Worre handbook of how to get more recruits. How to manipulate people to connect with people. If you trauma dump with them and someone can relate to you, then, oh, you have an instant connection. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's keep going. Talk to you. It was Ryan, then it was Shani, and then there was Trent, and it was Trent's church. It was amazing. And that is gross. Trent's church. Um, if I was at convention and I was not a religious person and people started calling Trent the prophet, the bishop, the seer, the revelator, the uh, whatever, I'd be like, oh my god, I'm in a cult. If he started quoting scripture to me, any scripture, it doesn't matter, um, because didn't Dan Stidham's husband, Mark, didn't he quote things from the book? Book of Mormon during a LuLaRoe convention? I think he did. So Trent is doing equally cringy, gross things, but you know, it's religious manipulation. So again, there's another red flag. Talk about having a vision, talk about effort, talk about faith, talk about virtue, courage, and prayer, but I'm gonna have to do a training for that later. Oh, of but course you will. motivational speaker, Jeremy, you guys, you guys know that I'm a believer, right? And if you want to see that entire speech, Savannah Marie did a video on it live, reacting to it. Just go hit up Savannah Marie's channel. It's amazing. I'm not going to, you know, jump on her parade. I'm going to direct you to go over there and watch it because, oh my gosh, this speech didn't make sense. It was all over the place. He kept talking about Chanel shoes or something and prosperity doctrine. When I tell you I wanted to take a lap, I was like so pumped. Mm -hmm. I was screaming my lungs out that I was losing my voice. Girl. Boy. Voice. Like it was amazing. And I want to share that with you right now. Because I, I have it like so vivid right now that I can share my energy with you so that you can feel what I felt. And he talked about having more inspiration. I have more inspiration. You want to know what my inspiration is? People who email me at this email down below, jonesjewelshop at gmail.com. People who send me their stories and tell me how I inspired them to look at their situation with honesty, which is what I encourage all of you to do. If you are an active paparazzi consultant and you buy every single day, Monday through Friday, through the fear of missing out, and you have more inventory than you can reasonably sell in a month, then yeah, that's why I do this. You guys are my inspiration. You, who send me your stories and tell me that you have finally left paparazzi jewelry and accessories. I had someone who emailed me and they left Herbalife because they did the same thing by looking around at their situation and they had more Herbalife than they knew what to do with. I had someone who emailed me and told me that she left Pampered Chef. I had another email from somebody who told me that she left, what was that one? The fingernail one. And she had a closet, a walk-in closet full of, of nails, nail strippy things. Color Street, that's the one. So I get a lot of emails from people who are in multi-level marketing companies. They find my content you know, I'm, I'm consistent in bringing the message home that I want you to look at your situation honestly. I want to look in, I want you to look at what you're making versus what you're spending. You know, um, having a vision board is great, 
but also having a dose of reality and looking at your situation honestly is equally as important, if not more so. You talk about having more for yourself. You talk about having more for your family. You talk about, this is the part that I want to tell you something, okay? You talk about more hustle. And when I hear the word hustle, I grinch. I, I, get, I, I get upset. Because the world right now has turned that hustle word into doing more. But people don't understand what doing more means. And so I grinch at it because... I yes, hustle is a cringy word. Side hustle, work hustle. That's the thing. We as Americans don't understand the meaning of the word hustle because corporate America has turned hustle into work harder and longer for less. That's what hustle means to me. Work harder and longer for less. When you're doing a side hustle, like a multi-level marketing company, you are working harder and stronger, in most cases, for nothing. So when someone tells you to hustle, I tell you to sit down and shut up. Okay? You should be working smarter, not harder. You should be looking at your situation honestly and with logic. You shouldn't be hustling just for the sake of hustling. Okay? Because that's where your mental health starts to suffer through the hustle. That is where your physical health starts to suffer through the hustle. So yeah, you should not be hustling. You should be thinking about your situation and having a game plan in place. I don't agree with the belief system that society now has because I was the one who was working 90 hours a week. I was overworked. I was tired. I, was, I didn't have boundaries. I, I wanted to quit so many times the business, not because the business was bad, but because I didn't have boundaries. And I love the honesty right here. Okay, here's an elite telling you that she was working 90 hours a week on, on her hustle. And she was tired. And she wanted to quit. Yeah. Listen to the honesty. And let's keep going. Because all of the energy that I have, I gave and I gave and I gave. And my cup was so empty. And it was nothing to do with the business. It was a lot to do with people. We deal with people, and sometimes as leaders, we pour so much into everybody, but nobody else pours into us. They just. I'm 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 just gonna say, back when I was on your team, Andrea, because I was a part of your downline. Okay, back when I was on your team, my cup was never filled by my upline. Um, I never got anything poured into me. Just saying. I was pouring my energy and effort into my business and to my teammates who needed me. And, you know, two of them I'm still friends with and they can attest to that fact. Okay? But, Andrea, the only thing I ever got from you was go in your back office and buy inventory. The only thing I got from you is you need to recruit more. The only thing I got from you is... Uh, encouragement to continue to buy to get a Shopify store because the more inventory I had the more customers I would have this was back in 2019 but this is what you said to me so I'm calling you out maybe yeah you were working 80 90 hours a week but you are also encouraging all of us to do the same thing and you encouraged us to quit our full-time jobs, to put all of our energy and time into paparazzi. Just take, take, take. And so when he said we need to be more, do more hustle, I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to listen to what he's about to say because I want to see is he in that same system belief that everybody has? And maybe that's you too today. Maybe you have the same system belief and I want to share this with you because what spoke to me was, he said, hustle is discipline. Are you guys hearing me? I want you to put that in the comments. Hustle is discipline. And everybody, you know, and then he talked about having peace and tranquility, having life will throw you more than you expect. Hustle is not always discipline. Okay? 
It just isn't. And if you think that way, please take a step back and look at what your hustle has gotten you. Okay? Hustle is not always discipline. Again, you should be working smarter, not harder. And if you're hustling and you're burning the candle at both ends and spending more money than you're making, you're doing it wrong. Okay? And all of you that have followed me for 11 years, you know what I had to go through. You know what I had to face, not knowing the language, not knowing what to do as a leader. I have to learn many, many things. Thank you, Sammy. I'm going to pin you right here. Hustle means discipline. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to pin you right now. So everybody just sees the prettiness of what life brings and what the business brings, which I get to travel, which I get to retire my husband, which I got to buy the house of my dreams. We, we have. Hustle does not mean discipline, okay? Hustle. According to the Oxford Language Dif Dictionary, force to move hurriedly or unceremoniously in a specified direction. Informal, obtained by forceful action or persuasion. In the noun sense, hustle and bustle. In the informal sense, a fraud or a swindle. What does hustle mean in the uh, form of slang? To induce someone or to promote something when the odds of winning are overwhelmingly in the person offering favor. Okay? To cheat. To swindle. They hustled him out of savings. Okay? They, so they solicited somebody and hustled them out of their money. So if you look at it in those terms, picking up a side hustle or someone saying you should do this as a side hustle, that's to me a red flag. When someone says, oh, you should do this as a side hustle, ding, 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 it's a swindle, it's a fraud, it's a scam. And we should honestly put it out there that side hustle and or hustle is a scam. And when they gave you that speech at convention talking about having your hustle mentality yeah they want you to go and scam other people because they need your hustle to keep their business and their incomes afloat you know we are not hungry we are not living in a one-bedroom apartment we're not having our clothes in a trash bag right we are not living on a one-bedroom apartment somebody trying to get us a mattress or we're not suffering from going and getting more food, right? You only see the pretty picture. You only see where I get to travel. You only see the good stuff now, but it had to take sacrifices. And discipline is a sacrifice that no everybody wants to make. And you think that you have to have it together. You think that you have to be over here to be able to get there. And it's not, it just takes one thing. It just takes one step for you. Many of you that try to do the 75 heart or the boot camp, you quit within your few days because it was too much or it was too hard, right? You quit. That's not discipline. And I understand that it can be a lot. That's why I say just take one thing at a time. You don't have to finish it in 30 days. You don't have to finish it in 75 days. You don't have to finish it in 90 days. You just have to start today, and you start with one thing, and you take one step at a time. So you have to commit. You have to be determined on what you are going to do, and that takes discipline. I told you a few weeks ago that when I quit my jobs and I started working paparazzi full time, I told you that Danny will go to work, full time work. And I will get up at 4.30, 5.30 to make his breakfast. And then when he come back home, I mean, as soon as he left in the morning, I will go back to sleep until 11 a.m. in the morning. And then I will cook lunch, and then he will come in home for lunch, right? That, that was my life back in 2014. I was not disciplined. I did not have a schedule. I did not have a daily method of operation. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I just did, right? So hustle means discipline, and not everyone wants to be disciplined. Hustle does not mean discipline. 
Discipline is the practice of training people to obey the rules and code of behavior. It's also used as a punishment to correct disobedience. A branch of knowledge, typically one studied in higher education. Okay, and then uh, a verb, to obey the rules or code of behavior using punishment to correct. Um, so, discipline is the quality of being able to behave and work in a controlled way, which evol involves obeying particular rules or standards. It was an, that image of calm discipline that appear, appealed to, you know, others. It also means self-control, control and restraint. So, if you are being scammed into a side hustle and then you're disciplined enough to obey the person that got you into that scam and or side hustle, then you are not thinking logically or for yourself, okay? Not everyone wants to be consistent. Not everyone wants to work. You just want what's easy and that is not gonna take you anywhere. And that's why when he said more hustle, that means more discipline. You know why I get up at five, six in the morning? because I have to have my time with God, because I'm not gonna be able to make it throughout the day without Him. Bite model, religious manipulation. Do you know why I get up at five or six in the morning? Because my muscles in my body are on fire and I can't sleep anymore. But honestly, I don't need to get up in the morning to have time with my maker. Um, if you are being a good person, you do not need to have uh, a morning every day of silent reflection and religious manipulation time, okay? Honestly, if you were truly a religious person, you would exude your religion all day in everything you do. If you truly believed in the teachings of God and Christ and all that other stuff, and I'm just putting that out there, if you were truly a Christ-like person, you would not take advantage of others you would actually serve them and you would serve them because it was the right thing to do not because of monetary gain okay just putting that out there too if you truly were a religious person and wanted to be like Christ you would serve silently without reward and you would have him in your heart all day and you would exude his teachings in everything you do. You would stand up for the little guy. You would serve people without recognition. You wouldn't be seeking rewards and accolades. I'm just putting that out there. And for me to be able to face everything, then I get into power hour, then I start my day with my work. I'm not overwhelmed. And when he talked about having that peace, having more peace and tranquility in your life, after 11 years, I was crying, on, I was crying as I was listening to him because I was so overwhelmed for the past nine years, eight years in the business. And now I can say I have that peace. I have that tranquility. I have, I have more liberty. I have more freedom. And that's what we want for you. But it's going to take some sacrifices. But what? You're going to do it for yourself. You're going to do it for your family. You're going to do it for others. But it starts with you. So, oh my gosh, that message. And then he said, life throws you more... Life throws more at you when you list expected. You work a full-time job. Life is going to come to you. There's a lot of things that are going to come to you. Your kids, your, your family, right? But we care about our family, so we are going to, we're, we're going to have, we're going to make it happen for them. Okay, emotional control. We care about our family. Are you talking about your paparazzi family or your actual family? Because paparazzi and Team United Fashionistas like to say that they were a family unit and that they were strong. So are you talking about your paparazzi family or your actual family? I'm curious. And so life is always going to happen to us, but what you do with it is what matters. 
right? So anyway, I just wanted to come on and tell you that because I didn't get here in one day and I didn't get here in one year. And what you see now is a transformation of 11 years that I've been in the company. And she's been up and down and all around. She started at the bottom and she leveled up. She got in early and she stayed put. She recruited a lot of people, then she lost a lot of people. And when Nina Garcia quit, she lost a lot of people. And she's rebuilding that team and taking advantage of people yet again. 11 years where I had to take one step. 11 years where we had to build systems where we didn't have system. 11 years where I didn't know what I was doing every single day. What 11 years of no having trainers because nobody has taught us what we need to do in this business, but to sell jewelry, show the jewelry. You guys, I recruited somebody here. Well, I didn't recruit, she's about to sign up. But I went to the first time party that paparazzi invited us for and uh, to welcome people that were first timers at convention. And as I was finishing welcoming everyone after two hours, um, I went to the bathroom finally and I met Elaine. And I started talking to Elaine and, and I talked, she complimented my jewelry and I gave her a piece of, piece of jewelry. I got her to check. So she gave her a piece of jewelry. Did you give it to her off of your body or did you have your bling bag with you? Check me out. We are friends on Facebook now. She's thinking about joining. She wants to make more money. Run! Don't join! Right? And it's all because I love what I do, but are you talking to every single person that you meet? Are you letting them know what this business has done for you or what it's going to do for you or what, why you join? What has this business done for you? Leave a comment down below. Send me an email. What has happened to you since you joined paparazzi? What has happened to you since you left paparazzi? I have shared stories of women who got divorced because of paparazzi. I have a woman who lost spousal support because it was all sitting in their son's bedroom and she had over $300,000 of inventory that was sitting in there not sold. Yeah. Join this business, right? Or are you just not talking, not opening your mouths, right? It has been amazing, especially now that we get to see so many people around. We've been taking Ubers, we've been taking, we've been walking, people are watching us, they're seeing what this jewelry is all about. This is emotional control and thought control. I'm sorry, people know that Vegas is full of multi-level marketing people and they descend on the city like literally year round. We have the Monet Convention, the Optivia Convention, the Thrive Convention, the Herbalife Convention. There are so many conventions that happen in Vegas. It's kind of, ugh, okay? So yeah, people are like, yeah, what's going on? But here's the other thing. Vegas is an international airport, international city. Paparazzi is only available in the United States of America. So your ability to recruit is not as high as you think it is because one paparazzi is not an international company it's only a u.s based company and their territories are you talking to them are you letting them know what you do right Please so don't. i'm challenging you it takes hustle as discipline and it starts with you so i can't wait hustle is a scam and discipline is guilt and manipulation and control I hope you guys listen to this message and uh, I'm just inspired. I'm so inspired. I'm excited and I cannot wait to see you guys this coming year. The jewelry in the fall is going to be to die for. The Z The jewelry in the fall has been to die for. I'm sorry. I haven't seen anything yet. What they new released today were the pictures that were on the wall that Mandy Hench was walking down and saying, oh my gosh, look at these. Aren't these great? I mean, the rhinestone heart came out today with the barbed wire silver thing. In fact, I'm pretty sure it didn't sell out. But yeah, it's so amazing. Collection is amazing. I'm about to post pictures, which probably you have already seen them. But I encourage you to start taking pre-orders now because you'll have access to that in September, October, whenever they release it for all of us. Uh, I mean, all of us in paparazzi, of course, the ones that come to convention, they get to order that. So 
I love you and I'm proud of you and don't quit. Don't quit. You got this. I love you. I'm proud of you and don't quit because I'm all in and you should be too. All right. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for making it with it, uh, making it to the end with me. Thank you for being here for the full half hour. I want to give a shout out to my members that are current members at the time of recording this video. And yes, I am batch recording and this is not going to be posted for a month out. So I want to thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being financial supporters. I will update the member list when I get home from my trip. So I hope you're enjoying the shorts that I'm dropping of the food and the fabulous cities we're visiting. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.